Hi, I'm Jack Raffison, owner of Automatic Gate Company. About a year ago, I stopped manufacturing gates. However, we've been very busy installing gate openers and servicing gates. I'd like to share some information to help you get a good quality gate. So if you grab a pen and paper, let me give you some ideas that will help you. First thing you want to do is go to my website, automaticgatecompany.com. Print a picture of a gate you like. You want to make sure all your companies are bidding you on the same gate. The first thing you need to know is there's problems in the gate industry. Some people do a fantastic job, other people do very poor quality. A lot of problems with gates is the post isn't set deep enough. A lot of manufacturers only go about three and a half feet in the ground. And the gate's fine for five, six, seven years, but a lot of times after a decade or so, the gate will actually be dragging on the ground. So I'm gonna make sure you, that doesn't happen with your gate. The first thing you need to know on all the companies you get bids from, you want to make sure they're going a full four feet deep with a good 13 or 14 inch diameter hole. In other words, you want to make sure they bring out extra concrete. A bag of concrete is only about four dollars. So you really want to stress you want a deep hole so you don't end up with a gate that's dragging later. Second thing you want to be mindful and make sure all this is on the contract you want at least an inch and a quarter frame on your gate. A lot of companies use one inch and it's very small and it's flimsy. The second thing on the pickets, you want to use three quarter inch pickets, not half inch. So this is real important to get a good quality gate. You don't want them to cut corners on the material size. And oh yeah, well back to the post for a moment. This is a four by four post. A lot of companies will use one eighth inch thickness, very thin. You want to make sure on the contract that that post is quarter inch thick. So you're going to have a good strong post. If your post isn't right, your gate will give you trouble later. And the next thing we're going to do is talk about gate openers in a moment. So keep your pen out and I look forward to going into that with you in a moment. Thank you. Okay, buying the right gate opener for your gate is very important. There's probably over 35 brands on the market. Many of them are great, some of them are not so good. The main thing you want to look for is what we call long arm opener. A long arm opener is going to be one that grabs way out on your gate and grabs further out from your post. As you can see on some of the short arm openers, such as LiftMaster, BTF, Mighty Mule, Easy Gate, and I don't have them all here, but there's a lot of them on the market. They come with a very short bracket. From the hinge post over, most of them are averaging about four to five inches over. You can see on these brackets, they're very lightweight. And another bad thing about a short arm opener, they simply don't grab very far out on the gate. A lot of times what happens, you can push the end of the gate open, dogs or children can get right out. I don't sell these at all. I don't recommend that you buy one. Uh, not only are they not as good, some of the companies out there are charging hundreds more for their opener. LiftMaster, for example, I've seen prices all the way up to 2500 And in my honest opinion, they're just not built that well. What I've been using for decades is what I call long arm openers. You notice how long it is here. But another important thing, from the pivot point over to the hinge post, we're grabbing a full 13 inches out. Whereas on the short one, you're only grabbing four or five inches out. On these long arm openers, they're substantially better for holding your gate shut, especially if a child or a dog's pushing on the end of the gate, they won't be able to open it easily. Now you might say, well, which one's the best one? Well, 20 years ago, we were using the US Automatic. It was the best one on the market at the time. Uh, over time, we didn't really like the plastic limit switches. They were problematic. And the life expectancies, 12 to 13 years is about all you could see. They tended to dry up on the inside and they just seize up. So about a decade ago, we went to Apollo. Apollo got bought out by NICE, N-I-C-E, same company. And this was our go-to operator starting about 10 years ago. And it was considerably better than this one. However, it had magnetic limit switches and the build quality is not that good compared to what we have now. Uh, we did see a lot of, as they got bought out by NICE, we did see the quality control go down on them. About three years ago, another company came out called American Armor. Actually, a guy that worked for Apollo started his own business. 
Now this is my strongest opener I've ever used. It's 5 8 here, and as you can see on these shorter arm openers, very thin metal down to about 1 8 This thing's built like a tank. I also custom build my brackets. They're much heavier than stock. They grab further out. And also another nice feature, they have an aluminum black anodized tube, so the tube actually disappears with gate rail. This is the strongest opener I've ever used right here, and this is going to be the one we're going to use for you. Now, another thing on all of my gate openers, I custom build my own control box as of about 17 years ago. I don't use the stock boxes. They're very lightweight and gauge, and we simply don't use those. We also use what we call maintenance-free battery, and you don't have any rusting issues with the control box over time. So I'd like to do your opener for you. I've sent you a contract. You simply sign it, take a picture of it, and send it back to me. And I look forward to doing you a quality job. Thank you.